Hello YouTube, we're going to do a little a play Starfleet Battles, or learn to play Starfleet Battles, a very short game. I've got a little board set up here on my desk. I'll be rearranging the video camera here in just a second, so I'll be pointing at the map for most of the game. So let me just do that. could be using larger counters on a bigger hex map like that, but the standard counters that you're going to get for the game are actually much smaller. So we'll try doing this on the regular sized map first, those are the uh, mega hex counters versus the regular sized counters. If we need to uh, zoom in on this, I'll just pop out the camera and drop it down and get a closer look as we need. Hopefully that doesn't make anybody seasick. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be playing a Corn Battle Cruiser up against the Federation Heavy Command Cruiser. The Fed's already uh, two point values greater than the Gorn, so its drones are just going to be standard Speed 8 drones. Now these are the uh, SSDs, Starship data sheets. They have all the information concerning the ship that you're flying. They've got the charts for the weapons, photons, type 1 phasers, type 3 phasers. It's got the ammunition racks for your drones. It's got your anti-drone table. It's got the uh, information for your ship, movement cost, HET cost, how much power it has, turn mode, crew, number of shuttles, the hit points for those shuttles, and if you get into using them later in the game, boarding parties, T-bombs, probes, that sort of thing. The Gorn ship is similar. Type 1 phasers, Type 3 phasers, standard charts, shuttles, and it's got uh, plasma torpedoes instead of photon torpedoes. I'm running the map just into VLC for the video camera. And I've just got a, a graphic here of the energy allocation form. I'll use the one on the screen here for uh, the Federation, and I'll just use one on a, a grease sheet on the map. For the Gorn. So this is a little learn do play Starly Battles. It's a game that is uh, sold by Amarillo Design Bureau. You can find that at starfleetgames.com Let's see if we can rotate this around for you. So it's upside right. Okay, so energy allocation for the Gorn. Do we have 30 warp engines, or do we have 32? Okay, 
these are tournament ships, so it's going to be 30. Normally outside tournament, it be 32. Impulse engine, 4. 2 here, 2 here. And APR, 2 here and 2 here for another 4. So we have 38 power. These are tournament ships, they have 5 batteries. So we have uh, a block of four of them here, and there's one battery up here. And then we start allocating the ship. So on tournament cruisers, life support is one, active fire control is one. That's actually found right on your data sheet. Okay, we've got carried away. I'm using the energy allocation sheet. For the tournament ship, <laughs> but I'm actually using the Gorn battle cruiser. So it is 32 warp, and it's going to be 2 APR, not 4 APR. So let me just make that change. It's still 38 power. And I believe the batteries are fewer. I've got two batteries, two batteries for four. Yeah, four batteries instead of five. So, we're not using this ship. <laughs> we're using this ship. So I just made a, a few changes to the form. 32, 4, 2 for 38, 4 battery. And as I was saying, life support, active fire control costs are right here. Life support is 1. Shield cost is 1 plus 1 for 2. Now it's 1 plus 1 because if you only put 1 point in, you're at what we call minimal shield level, which means you only have 5 boxes. If those five boxes are destroyed and you later try and pay for full shielding for two points, well, those five shields were the entire shield, the entire shield was destroyed, that means you've lost all 30 boxes. So, it's uh, not standard that people would pay one point, they're going to pay the full two. Okay, so let's go back to the sheet. Okay. Now, the Gorn has plasma torpedoes. He's got two S's and two S. The S's are A and B. Now, an S torpedo is two plus two plus four, and it's two to hold. So we're going to come in hot, so we're going to be holding. Two S torps. Plasma F torpedoes are one plus one plus three, and they are free to hold. So we're just going to put a dash to indicate that we're holding the two F torps. We don't have these two lines for our ship. Shields are two points. Now we're coming in hot so we can have two special shuttles already armed and held. So we're going to hold two suicide shuttles. Now, suicide shuttles to arm over three turns are up to three, up to three, up to three, and whatever that equals, double that is your damage. And to hold that, it's just one point. So we have two suicides for one each. And we immediately begin arming two more specials if we want. So let's start arming wild weasels. Wild weasels are a distraction weapon. Those are one plus one, and a delay roll of one, or hold the one, one to hold. No big difference there. And the ship doesn't have a cloaking device. So let's add up how much power we've used so far. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've got thirty-eight available. We've used twelve. We've got twenty-six still available. So 
So let's put a good six points into reinforcement on the number one shield, and we'll go speed 20. So total power used, 38. Phaser capacitors charged. Well, let's take a look at our phasers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight phaser ones, and two phaser threes. So that's nine power. It takes one point to arm a type one, half a point to arm a phaser three, and we're coming in already armed. So we have a phaser capacitor of nine. Now let's energy allocate the Federation. So this is going to be our energy allocation form for the Fed. And the Federation SSD. So we have 32 warp. Impulse engines. We have two plus two for four. That's already written down over here for us. Now, this has got refits, so it's not atomic power reactors. They're atomic warp reactors. We have two of those. Number of batteries is five. Okay, life support is one. Active fire control is one. Activating shields is two. We have four heavy weapons, A through D. So we don't have E and F. Now the fo with the Fed, you can come in holding two overloaded photons. The arming for a photon is four plus four for an overload, for a maximum overload. For a standard or for a proximity, it's two plus two. These are one to hold, and these are two to hold. Now we can come in assuming two points per tube so to have them fully armed as a maximum overload it's going to be four per tube it's two plus two for a standard and it's also two plus two for proximity if you arm it as proximity you usually indicate with a little x that it's for prox We're not going to be using electronic warfare for now. You come in holding two special shuttles, so let's put two here. So these are two suicides. And he's got four shuttles on the Fed. Yep. Let's do the same thing here. Arm two wild weasels. Now what are what are our phaser capacitors? Well we got two phaser threes for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Phaser capacitors. Yeah, this particular sheet or this style of sheet doesn't have lines for that. Create it. So let's just put a line here. So phase capacitors at start is 11. Okay, 
Okay, so how much power have we used so far? Two, four. 16 is 20. 24. Out of 38 available. So let's go 14. Power for allocation is 38. We didn't do any tricks with battery, so it's still 5. there. Now we could be assigning boarding parties for guard assignments. We could also be plotting midterm speed changes, but we're not going to use those rules for this little demonstration. So our ships that we have for speeds, we have a speed 20 Gorn, and we have a speed 14 Fed. Now what we're using here is a 32 impulse speed chart. This is a PDF so I can't mark on it, but the Fed's going speed 20, sorry, the Fed's going speed 14, the Gorn's going speed 20, and as we call out these impulses, each impulse will consist of several stages and those stages are typically movement, tractor, launch, transporter, and fire. Now there's more stages to the, than that but this is the general breakdown. For instance under launching there's stages specifically for launching shuttles, landing shuttles, launching plasmas, launching drones, etc. But for our quick little session here, we're not going to need to get into that it's kind of specific detail. It's just going to be a, a quick little game. So this is basically how the game is called. It's on that 32 impulse chart. So we take our, our ships, put them in the starting positions. Typically it's 1701 and 2530, but I'm just going to put them pretty close here, just to do a quick little fast game. And what happens is the controller would call out what moves. So on the first impulse, nothing moves, and then you go through those stages. Movement, tractor, launch, transporter, fire. If anybody has any actions, they do them on, on the call. Next impulse, the Fed doesn't move, but the Gorn does. Next impulse, the Fed moves, but the Gorn doesn't. Next impulse, the Fed doesn't move, the Gorn does. Well, let's look at our range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Range 13. Our phasers are in the 9 to 15 bracket, so we have a 50% chance of hitting for doing 3, 2, and 1 damage if we roll 1, 2, and 3. So a quick way you can look at this, you can do 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6, divided by 6, so roughly at this range for every phaser you're going to fire, you're going to do roughly 1 point of damage statistically. You could get lucky, you could fire six phasers and roll six ones and do 18 points of damage, but it's not very likely. Your chances of doing damage 
on the dice rolls increase the closer you get. With the Federation photons, overloaded photons cannot do anything outside of range 8. Not to range 8 and under to hit. Standard photons cannot hit at range 0 or 1, but they can hit all the way out to range 30. And they, standards, will do 8 points of damage. But you notice this line for proximities cannot do anything close range, but they've got very good rolls to hit at 9 to 12 and 13 to 30. And they will do 4 points of damage but only at ranges from 9 to 30. So if you got a, a fleet of Federation ships, they may very well want to come in when they're at range 45 from their target with proximities armed. When they get to range 30 or so, fire off proximities and then start arming standard photons or overloaded photons as they close. Okay, so at this range, the Gorn is going to launch a plasma torpedo. Now there is a chart that you can use for keeping track of this stuff. These are what are called play aids. So this is an S torpedo. We'll make it real. You don't announce if it's real or fake or pseudo, but you have to keep track of whether or not it is or not. The target of this is the counter CA3. This is impulse 4. Impulse 4. Of turn 1. Now, the Gorn ship has got two S torpedoes. It's got an A and a B. Now, this is left portion, and that's right portion, LP, RP, and your diagrams for that are right here. So, with the current positioning of the Fed here and the Gorn here, left portion would be like this in this section and right portion would be like this inclusive so both of those tubes arc on the fed currently so we're just gonna pick a tube so let's make a tube A so tube A the launching unit is Gorn BC4 And the counter is counter CO. And it is a 30 point warhead because it's an S torpedo. Let's make that a little bit darker. There we go. And you get a little section here for tracking damage that has been done to the plasma. And you get a little line over here for notes. You get a similar type of play aid for drones. And you get another, another type of play aid for shuttles. So on our ships, both the Fed and the Gorn have both got a suicide shuttle armed. So when it comes time to launch those, those shuttles are admin shuttles. They are armed as suicide. And when you launch it, you fill in the rest of the information. Okay, so let's go to the next impulse. The Fed moves. Gorn moves. The 
the Gorn's going to turn. So let me grab a turn marker. and place it on the map. Now the plasmas are on the board as well. They move speed 32, so they move every impulse. Now the Federation has its own seeking weapons. They're drones. Now as we said, they're only speed 8 because the Fed is already two points more expensive than the Gorn. Now the Fed could purchase speed 12 drones, speed 20 drones, speed 32 drones, but those cost battle points. And when the game is over you determine the win-loss ratio for the game and those extra purchases will count against the Fed. So the Fed right now is only carrying speed 8 drones. So the Fed's going to launch two drones. and they're speed 8. So we've placed the counter on the map. And we're going to go to the next impulse. Oh, forgot. The Fed just launched two drones. Now the drones can drone racks can launch one drone per turn per rack. Now the Fed special shuttle could have also have been a scatter pack. Basically, it's a shuttle with six drones attached to the shuttle. They get launched. They wait a minimum of eight impulses, and then they can release their drones for this particular game, we didn't do that. But it's an option. So next impulse, the sixth impulse, nothing moves except for the plasma. Seventh impulse, fed moves. The Gorn moves. Now the Gorn is doing a side slip. The next movement after side slip must be forward or turn, but since the Gorn has just turned, he has to complete his turn mode before he can turn again. So if we look at the Gorn ship, which is traveling at speed 20, so it's the 18 to 24 bracket, his turn mode is 5. So the Gorn turned here, he's gone once, he's gone twice. That means he's got to go three more times before he can turn again. Now since he just slipped, the only movement he can do is directly forward. Unless he wishes to perform something called a high energy turn, which he would have had to pay for during energy allocation. And we look at the sheet, HET cost right here, for a Gorn is 5. Now during energy allocation the Gorn could have drained four of his batteries and used those four points for arming plasmas or paying for life support active fire control shields and recharged his batteries with warp power and allocated one point of power of warp directly to the HET line so that in an emergency, he could have drained those four batteries, applied it to the HET line, and performed high energy turn as needed. We didn't do that. I'm just explaining that's how it would work. Now on the map, a high energy turn can be up to 360 degrees. So basically, it, it allows him to turn in whichever facing direction he wants when he performs it. There is a little diagram on the map over here with facings right up here. 
So if the shuttle or the ship were in this hex, right in the middle, the number one shield would be facing A, the number three shield would be facing C, the number five shield would be facing E, etc. So as you notice the on the SSD itself, there are six shields. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. So that's one shield per hex map facing. Okay, so next on Pulse, the Speed 8 drones of the Fed move, the Gorn moves, and the Plasmas move. Next on Pulse, just the Plasmas. Tenth on Pulse, Fed. Orn, Plasmas. Next impulse, nothing moves except for the Plasmas. Now, the Federation earned two shuttles as wild weasels, but in order to use those shuttles as a weasel, the ship must be going speed 4 or under. Now, the ship is going speed 14. If we were using mid-turn speed changes, the ship could have plotted various speed changes to drop its speed. Um, you can drop your speed down by 10 or by half, whichever is greater. When you are increasing your speed, you can double your speed or up by 10, whichever is greater. So if there were mid-turn speed changes plotted, speed 14, could drop from 14 down to 4. But since we're not using midterm speed changes for this game for simplicity, his only other way of getting down to speed 4 or under would be to declare something called an emergency deceleration. You can declare this on the movement stage of any impulse. The next two impulses, your ship moves at its current speed, and on the impulse after that, it's, it's at speed 0. And on that impulse, it could launch a wild weasel. Wild Weasel is a distraction weapon, sort of like similar to uh, chaff, or in submarine movies when they release a little canister bubbling of air to distract and make noise, distract oncoming torpedoes. It's the same type of same type of the theory. Uh, basically, the shuttle emits a strong warp signature matching that of the ship, while the ship has reduced its signature output. Anyway, next impulse, the twelfth impulse, the drones move, the Federation moves, the Gorn moves, the Gorn has gone one, two, three, four, five. His turn mode is complete. I could remove this off the map, but I'll leave it. The plasma is now at range one, two, three to the fit. Next impulse, the Gorn moves. The Gorn turns. And I'll put another turn marker on the map. and the plasmas move. Now, if we look at the movement sheet, we are about to call impulse 14. So on impulse 14, speed 14s will move, as will the plasma. So, since the range is 2, 
between the Fed and the plasma. If we were to go to next impulse, the Fed would move or turn, and the plasma would go. If the Fed wanted to go forward, the plasma would hit the Fed and damage him on movement phase, denying the Fed the ability to try and shoot the plasma with its phasers. So if the Fed wants to go forward, next impulse, now would be the time that he would want to fire at the plasma, unless he's turning. He can't side slip because he just side slipped. Because every time he side slipped, the next movement must be forward or turn. Now if he hadn't side slipped, he would be here. In which case, next movement, he could side slip out away from the plasma. The plasma could turn, and then he would have an opportunity to fire at it at range one. Yeah, so at this impulse, what does the Fed want to do? Movement, tractor, launch, transport, or fire? Does he want to fire at the plasmas? He'll decline. Next impulse, the Fed moves, and the plasma moves. So the Fed, if he moves forward, will get hit, so he decides instead to turn. And the plasmas could try and go here, to hit his weak shield, or it can turn here to try and hit the forward battle shields. The photon torpedoes on a Fed are FA, which is the front arc out on the ship. It's out this hex row, out this hex row, and in between. So here, all the way around to here. there, all the way to here. That's the front arc. Now if we were, we were playing a game where mid-turn speed chains were, were allowed, the Fed could declare a mid-turn speed change, drain some power from batteries, and speed up. So going here for the plasma wouldn't be that good of an idea, because the very next impulse the Fed could move, and it's another movement on the plasma's count. So. Normally, it would move here. Now, because we know that midturns aren't being used, we're going to move it forward to here. Now, at this point, the Fed doesn't know whether or not this plasma is real or fake. So he may want to fire as many phasers into the plasma as possible, but that means that's fewer phasers he can fire at the Gorn. So it's a 24 point shield. This plasma was launched on impulse 4. It is now impulse 14. It's gone 10. So if we look at the warhead strength, it's a 30 point warhead up to the, up to the first 10 movements on the 11th it drops down to 22 so the shield strength on the number 5 is 24 so we know already that that plasma is not going to penetrate the shield so the Fed is going to take the chance that it might be fake. But he's still going to mitigate the damage a little bit. He's going to fire two phaser threes. These phaser threes here are 360 degrees. And there's a chart for doing that. Basically, that phaser, those phaser threes are number nine and ten. So it's number nine and ten. Target is plasma. Turn one. Impulse fourteen. 
and the counter is CO. So I'm just going to write CO over here. Now on this sheet, we've got seeking weapons, target, heavy weapons, target, phasers, target, turn, impulse. So I'm putting 9 comma 10 at the plasma CO and it's happening on turn 1 impulse 14. And then we we're going to roll two dice. So that's a 4 and a 6 at range 1. So let's look at our chart. At range 1, a 4 does 4 damage, and a 6 does 3. That's 7 damage. So that's 4.5 damage to the warhead. So, 4.5. That was movement, tractor, launch, transport, or fire. We just did fire, rolled the damage. Next impulse. The Gorn moves. And the plasma hits. So at this point, the Gorn player would reveal to the Fed what he has written down that it was real when it was launched so this is impulse 16 or sorry impulse 15 movement so 15 minus those 10 movements so it launched on the 4th it moved on the 5th 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th 11th 12th 13th 14th and the 15th so we actually look at that. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 movements. And if we look at 11 movements on the warhead of an S type plasma, that's 22 damage. Now, we also did 4.5 damage to the plasma. So the half point gets thrown away, so that's four points off of 22. So that's an 18 point warhead. And we scratch them all off. So we have six more to go, but the Fed has five batteries. So let's say that we use five points of that. And we reinforce our shield with it. So five, and I'm going to put a little B for battery. So that 18 minus five is 13. accidentally clicked out of my pencil. There we go. So the Fed has a half damage number five shield. Okay, 16th impulse. Speed eight drones move. 
Federation moves. Gorn moves. And the plasmas have already hit their target. So they get removed off the board. Now the game we're playing here is with a fixed map. So if the Gorn hits the edge of the map, it'll take 5 damage and stop moving. Normally we'd, you'd be playing with a floating map. So you would just move all the hexes, or all the counters back the number of hexes that gives the Gorn the amount of room it needs. So if it needed another 10 hexes, you'd move all the, the counters back 10. Or if you've got a map where you've got the sections cut out, you would just place another section for the, the pieces to move on to. Okay, 17th impulse, nothing moves. The Gorn on this impulse is going to launch another plasma. If we look at the Gorn, we have already launched a tube. So the A tube here is on this side of the ship on the map. The B tube is right portion. Well, right portion will be right down this row, but it's just on the wrong side, just on the wrong side of the Fed. The Fed is just outside the arc, so that right portion plasma cannot arc. However, the F torpedo is right side, so that does arc. So now the, the plasma F can arc in three directions when it launches, so that's the best direction. If we grab sheet. This can be either a real or a fake. It's an F torpedo. This is impulse 17. Turn 1. Counter is number 6. The launching unit is BC4. And the tube is tube D as in delta. It is a 20 point warhead. And the target is CA3. So the Gorn player would then put that sheet down so nobody can see it. And they would continue on. Next impulse, the Gorn moves and the plasma moves. So let's just move the plasma. Now, if I keep slipping out like that, the Fed will continue to be outside of that arc. So instead of side slipping that way, I'm going to side slip this way. Now, if we look at the count, the Gorn turned in this hex. Went one, two, three, four. But if those two side slips weren't there and we wanted to count, it would look like it only went one, two, three. So you should always leave your side slips on the map with your turn markers. It's usually a good idea to have two turn, two pointed turn markers, and at least two side slip markers. That way, if your opponent challenges your ability to turn on that movement, you can more easily show him where your movement was and verify that yes, you are able to turn. But on the Gorn's turn, mart, turn mode here, he it's a 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, he still has one more to go.
but we have now changed the fact of the S torpedo B tube now arcs. So if we look at the line for the right portion, the Fed is within that hex. So if we look at right portion here on the SSD, you'll notice that it follows that shield line. You also notice these three little lines with the arrows. Those are the directions in which the plasma could launch. So on this map, this hex line is the right portion divider. So it's from here to here and in between. That's right portion. So we follow the line. The Fed is able to be hit. So on the 18th impulse, the Warren is launching another plasma. Launch to B as in beta. And the counter is A O as a 30 point warhead. So here we are indicating that it is a fake plasma. Pseudo. Now, that's not announced, it's hidden, but it's recorded. The other plasmas were real, this one's a fake. Okay, next impulse. The Fed moves and the plasma moves. Fed just turned. Plasma moves. Plasma moves. Next impulse, the drones move. The Gorn moves. And the plasmas move. Now, the movement of the drones for the Fed, the Fed is betting that the Gorn is going to turn this way, where he was. But now that this plasma is here, he's not sure. So instead of going forward like that, he's going to turn this way. Now the target of the drones must remain within the FA arc. And it is on all of its movements. Okay, 21st impulse. Fed moves, corn moves. Oops, I forgot to move my Gorn last turn, so let's back that up. So, one, two, three, four, that's a five. Now on this impulse, the Fed moves, and the Gorn moves, and the Plasma moves. So, which way does the Gorn want to go? Does he want to go this way, or does he want to go this way? On a fixed map, if he turns, it's one, two, three, four, five. And then this hex here does have a number, so it's a playable hex. So we can turn and continue going this way. So if this were one hex farther down this way, he would not be able to turn without hitting the wall or the edge of the map. But since he is able to do it, now we're going to 
to grab the turn marker and place it. Now you notice it looks like it's, if you just count from the turn markers, it looks one, two, three, four. But if you follow the side slips, it's one, two, three, four, five. That's why it's sometimes really important to leave two side slip markers on the map. Okay, what's the range? Range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Next impulse, just plasmas move. Twenty-third impulse, fed corn. Turn mode of the fed. At fourteen, turn mode is four. One, two, three, four. So on this impulse, the fed could turn. The Fed knows that the Gorn is turned down, so he's going to turn in. Next impulse, the drones move. The Gorn moves. And the plasmas move. Now, the first F-Torp was launched from tube D on the Gorn. And tube D is the right-hand side on the right-hand side is over here. So the Gorn has another plasma that he can launch. And he's going to do that. So this is impulse 24. Turn 1. This is tube C. Launching unit BC4. This is counter CO. It is a 20 point warhead. There's an F twerp. The target, a CA3, the Fed. For instance, the notes down here CA3, you could write Fed if you wanted to. Now we have to mark down whether it's real or fake. So the first one was real, it hit. This one, we know it's real, the Fed doesn't. This one is a fake, the Fed doesn't know that. And this one, we're going to make it real. Now, next impulse. Nothing moves except for the plasmas. If we remove it here, which we could, the impulse after that, we know the Fed moves. You can move here or just move forward. So we're no longer hitting the front shields, we will be hitting the back shield. So we are going to, if we go here, the Fed has the ability to side slip, which means the plasma would have to HET, but it wouldn't hit them. So it's kind of a bad situation for the, the Gorn Plasmas. But if, he si if the, the Fed side slips out, instead of going straight forward, it opens up the range a bit as the Gorn's sliding by. So we're going to go in front. And then the S-Torp moves. And this one moves. Next impulse, the 26th impulse, the Fed moves, the Gorn moves. And the Fed is going to take the side slip. And 
and the plasma is going to go here because the fed just slipped he must go forward and he's turned and only gone two this plasma could go here because it's trying to get the target within its FA it could not go here because it's opening the range or it can HET the plasmas don't move when they HET unlike a ship so we're going to HET and we're going to face in this direction now the feds number five is damaged the feds number five is on this side if he goes forward the plasma might hit it depending on the movement chart but unfortunately here the fed does not move next impulse so doing that in that direction doesn't really help now the next movement the plasma could turn but there's no real reason to HET it facing this direction so we're just going to face it that way now on this impulse the fed knows he's not moving next impulse and there's two plasmas there he's got an S torp off his number one which is his primary battle shield he's got an F torp off the side shield which isn't the primary battle shield but it is a battle shield he's already fired off two phaser threes does he want to fire into the S torp off the number one or the F torp off his number six the shield not facing the enemy right now the head's more concerned about his number one he's guessing that it's a real torpedo so he'll fire some phasers at it now it's a 30 point warhead and that plasma was launched on impulse 18 this is impulse 26 which means it's going to be hitting within the first 10 and the reason that's important is that a nest warp within the first 10 is 30 points of damage that's enough to take out the entire shield so what's the damage for phaser 1 at range 1 well if you add this up this is 32 divided by 6 that's roughly about 8 per torpedo per phaser and then you cut that in half so that's 4 points off the warhead per phaser one roughly so if we look at the number of phasers that will fire 4, 8, 12, 16 and that's if we roll average we might roll badly phaser threes are shot you got two phaser ones here so let's fire one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six phaser ones at the S torp. So that's literally phasers one through six, one dash six at plasma. And it's the S torp, so we're just going to write S torp over here. And it's AO. This is impulse one, or sorry, turn one, impulse 26. Now, the impulse matters here because it's within the last eight of the turn. <coughs> this last eight. Any phasers fired within this last eight are going to have a cool down period before they can fi be fired again next turn. And it's an eight impulse cool so these are being fired on the 26 which means they won't be able to fire again until the third impulse that's why it's important to write down the impulse of when you fire your weapons okay so we had six phasers being fired into the S torp
and we've got pretty awesome rolls for the fit. So that's 8 plus 14 for 22 plus another 8 for 30 and a 4 for 32. But that gets cut in half because it's a plasma that's being shot. So that's 16 off the warhead. Sixteen. Now the Fed could have also fired at the F-Torp with these phasers and these phasers, but it's going to be hitting a really strong shield and he wants to hold back some phasers for the Gorn. So he's not firing anything there. The range on the map between the Gorn and the Fed at this point is range 11. Next impulse, only the plasmas move. At this point the Fed finds out that this S-Torp is fake. It does no damage. This F-Torp is real. It hits the number 6. It is the plasma that was launched on impulse 17 and it hit on the 27th. So it's gone 10 movements. So 10 movements on an F-Torp means it's a 15 point warhead. coming off of the 30 shield. And that plasma is removed from play. So that means there's only one plasma still on the board in play for the Gorn. It's the real one that is an F-Torp, and it is B-Tube on the Gorn that is still armed. B-Tube, however, is on the right-hand side. That's this side here. One, two, three, four, five. The Gorn's got one more fort to go, and then it can either go this way, or it can go this way. So let's see what happens. Next impulse, the Fed moves, and the Gorn moves, the Plasma moves, and the Gorn is going to go one, two, three, four, five, and the drones move after the target does. This is 28th impulse. 29th impulse, just the Gorn and the plasmas. So, what does the Gorn do at this, this point? Does he turn this way, or does he turn this way? If he turns this way, he gets his plasma to come to bear. turns this way, that plasma doesn't arc. So, the one's going to turn this way. Thirtieth impulse. The Fed moves. The Gorn doesn't. The plasma does. Thirty-first impulse. The Gorn moves. The 
and the plasma does. The Gorn at this point is going to launch. Another plasma. B2, Impulse 131, real, S-Torp, AO, 30-point warhead. The strength of the warhead is always announced, but whether or not it's real or fake is not. The target is not announced either, but it's pretty obvious who the target is, since there's only one enemy ship. So that was the 31st Impulse. What's the range? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Next impulse, the drones move. The Gorn is now going in this direction, so the Fed drones are going to go this way. The Fed moves. The plasmas move. And the Gorn moves. This is the last impulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to the Gorn. The Gorn's going to hold this phaser fire. There is a plasma, a counter CO, which is a 20 point warhead, launched on the 24th. It is now the 32nd. It'll hit after it's gone nine moves. So an F Torp on nine moves is 15 points off the Fed's number one. the Fed has four Phaser 1s it can fire. So each each Phaser will do roughly four off the warhead. So he fires all four, that's 16 points, it's probably going to overkill it. So let's fire two more Phaser 1s. And that'll be number 7 and number 8. Seven, eight at plasma, one thirty two, and it is counter CO F Torp. Four and a five at range one. That's eight points. Four off the warhead. At this point, it's energy reallocation time. That was the last impulse of the first turn. So here is the Fed's energy allocation sheet. The Fed's got some battle damage, but no internals. So it's still going to be a total 38 power available. Still the same life support, active fire control, and shields. Is holding the first torps. Are now two points. So that's a, that's a bracket and a two. I usually use a bracket to indicate holding. He still has the two suicides, and he has two weasels. 
Now at this point, the Fed out of the 11 has fired everything except for two. So phase capacitors use out of the 11 is nine, which means there's two out of the 11 still there. So if we want to rearm phasers, we need to put a nine for all of them if we want to arm all of them. And since we just gained two, four, six, eight points from the photons, no longer chewing that power down, that's what we're going to do. So let's see how much we, we've used so far. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, so twenty-five. So out of the thirty-eight, we've used twenty-five which means we've got 13 left. Okay, the Gorn. No damage to it. So it slows 38. Gorn didn't drain any power. Light fire control, light support didn't fire any phasers, but it did launch all four plasmas. So he needs to start arming. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we have twenty four still available. So we're going to reduce the speed to 14. Now let's make that 12. And we're going to put 12 reinforcement on the number 2. Okay, so we have a 13 fed, we have a speed 12 Gorn, and we have a uh, speed 8 drone, and speed 32 plasmas. So, second turn, impulse 1, movement, the plasma hits. Tractor, launch, transporter, fire. So, that CO. was a 20 point warhead. The number of movements has reduced it to 15 and it took 4 points of damage from phaser fire. So it's an 11 point warhead. So Fed takes 11. There's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That counter gets removed from play. Next impulse. Nothing moves except for plasma. I forgot to move this on the first impulse. So second impulse, plasma moves. Just to double verify that, that was launched on the 31st from here. 32nd, 1st, 2nd. Nothing else moves. Fourth impulse. Gorn moves. The Gorn can turn. One, two, three. Let's verify that. 
12, turn mode of 3. So by slowing down, the Gorn's able to turn. Because you dropped its turn mark from the 5 to 3. So there's your point of turn for the Gorn. And the Fed moves. Now the Fed has damage to his left side. And that's his left side over here. So if he turns, he's exposing that left side to the Gorn. So instead of turning, he's going to try and keep that away by either side slipping or going forward. Well, he's also got slightly damaged number one, so he's just going to go forward. But let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's got two more that he wants to close. So instead of forward, he's going to side slip. And the plasma moves, of course. On the fourth impulse, the drones move, and the plasmas move. Fifth impulse, the fed moves, and the plasma moves. Sixth impulse, the gorn moves, and the plasma moves. Now this is an AO counter, and that is a 30 pointer, and it was launched on the 31st. It's only moved 7, so it's a still full 30 points. Now, the Fed did fire some phasers on the 32nd, number 7 and 8, so those aren't available, even though we recharged them. Phasers 1 to 6 were fired on the 26th, so they are available. So he's got quite a few phasers available. Except for number 7 and 8. Now, does the Fed plan on exposing his number 1 to the Gorn? No, but it's still a primary battle shield. He'd prefer to keep his phasers for shooting the Gorn, so at this point he needs to make a decision. Take the shield damage, and save the phasers for shooting the Fed, or the Gorn, or does the Fed take those phasers and instead shoot them at the plasma to mitigate the damage on his number one? Well, the Fed's got four photon torpedoes that he's planning on firing at the Gorn this turn. So the question is, is how badly damaged does he want his shields to be? How much damage does he think he can do to the Gorn? Well, if he looks at his shield, he's got a 21 shield. So he wants to take at least 10 off the torpedo, at least. Four points per phaser. going to fire two phaser ones and two phaser threes. So on turn two, impulse six, he's going to fire nine, ten, What? So it's 9, 10, 5, and 6. Phaser 3s, Phaser 1s. Phaser 1s did 14. That's 7 off the warhead. 
and he did eight for four more. So minus eleven off the warhead. Next impulse, nothing moves except for the plasma. So AO hits. As we know, AO is real. So that's a uh, 30 minus 11 is 19. We have two points left on the shield. Range is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Next impulse, the drones move. The Gorn moves. The Gorn is going to move up over the turn bring that reinforced shield towards the Fed, and the Fed is going to slip in. Next impulse, nothing moves. Next impulse, the Fed moves. Next impulse, the Gorn moves. Next impulse, the drones move. Next impulse, the Fed moves. Range 5. If we look at the Fed's chart, for photons, 1 to 3 at range 5, he'd like 3 to 4 for 1 to 4, or 2 for a 5. But in order to get the 2, he'll have to expose his number 1, so he's going to be settling for the 3 to 4 range. So, next impulse, Gorn moves. One, two, three, four. That's where the Fed gets his range 4. Now, th this is a guessing game at this point for the Fed. Does he want to try and shoot the number three shield of the Gorn by waiting for the Gorn to get up enough and then turning in? They're moving the same speed, so there's a very good chance he'll do that. But then again, there's also a very good chance that the Gorn is going to turn towards and in. So does the Fed fire? Well, I know where the reinforcement is. So let's do a random roll here. One to two, he'll fire now. Three to four, he'll hold. Five and six, he'll throw, he'll... Mm, I was going to say fire half, but let's say one to three, he fires now. So he's going to hold. Next impulse, just the Gorn. Gorn slips out. Fed now has one, two, three, four, range five. He didn't want that. Next impulse, drones move. Sorry, that wasn't supposed to be the Gorn to move, that was supposed to be the Fed to move. Now what's the Gorn moves? 16th impulse. Next impulse, nothing moves. 
17th impulse, just the Fed. If the Fed turns, his number one is not towards the Gorn, and he gets range 1, 2, 3, 4. He might side slip and get range 3, so he'll hold. Next impulse, the Gorn moves. But the Gorn wants to keep the, the, the reinforced shield towards. So he's going to turn in. Fed now has range 1, 2, 3. Does the Fed hold or continue to close? The Fed would prefer the 1 to 5 rolls at range 2. He'll wait. The Gorn is shooting a fresh number 2 shield. He'll hold. Next impulse, the Fed moves and the drones move. The Fed, if he goes here, gets his two shot. If the Fed goes here, he gets his two shot. Both are good, but if he goes here, the Gorn has an opportunity to slip onto his number one which the Fed won't want. So the Fed is going to go here for his two. He'll have to turn up to stay with FA, so now is the Fed's best time to fire. The Gorn is about to get hit. So he's going to launch his shuttles. He will launch shuttles at speed 6. He's got two bays, so there's two shuttles there. So this is counter S1. It's the BC4 both bays. Let's turn 2 and plus 20. It's a suicide. Seeking shuttle. Suicide. Now the Fed just knows that they're shuttles. He doesn't know that they're suicides. He can probably guess that they're suicides. And we get a bunch of fire happening. Now the Fed has already fired 9, 10, 5, and 6. So he'll fire 1 to 4 because they're forward half and they arc. He'll fire seven and eight. Because they're three they're ooh, they're rear half. Sorry, I thought those were three sixty. I have to look at the sheet closer. So those don't arc. Uh, actually the the numbering is off here, seven eight, seven eight. This should be labeled as 11 and 12. Let me just put the little 11 here and put a little 12 here. <laughs> 7 and 8 is wrong here. It should be 11 and 12. little mistake in the printing of the SSD. Uh, so 7 and 8 up here. So that's 6 phaser 1s. Gorn is also reta retaliating at the same time because he's figuring the Fed's going to fire and he's going to lose phasers. So, the Gorn pulse 
plus 20. And that's got the Fed. The Gorn is firing at the Fed. Gorn target. <laughs> Fed target. 2, 20. The Gorn will be firing 1, 2, 5, 6, and number 10. One, two, five, six, ten, and number eight. The reason he's firing the eight is because if he takes internals, that's a phaser he's going to want to absorb damage on. So, one, two, three, four, five phaser ones from the Gorn. Phaser 3. Okay, so Phaser 3. At range 2, we'll do 3 damage. Six for the roll of a one. Two twos. Oops, sorry, that's range three. Uh, range two is seven, not six. Um, two twos is twelve. And two threes. There's another 10. So that's going to be 6 inside. Does the Fed have batteries to reinforce? Well, we drained the batteries. Did we remember to recharge the batteries? No, we didn't have any, any power to recharge the batteries. So, the Fed is taking six inside. Now, the Gorn is also being hit with those phasers and those four photons. Now, the photon rolls at range two are one to five. Three hit. The Gorn has 12 reinforcement and 4 battery, so he'll drain the 4 battery. To mitigate one of the photon hits. So that means right off the bat he gets hit. with 32 from the two photons. It's a 30 point shield. So he's taking two inside so far. Now the other phasers or six phaser ones. This is where the Gorn get hit, get, gets hit hard. Six phaser ones at range two. Throw down shield. The Fed rolled crappy. Okay, so the two is six. Four means ten. Five is four for fourteen plus nine. That's twenty three. So that's twenty five inside the Gorn. The 
fed is taking six. where the damage allocation chart comes in. The underlined boxes only get hit once and then you move to the next row. So you use 2d6, so between 2 and 12, and that's what get damaged. So let's roll. Six inside on the Fed. Okay, so six forward hull. Five right warp engine, ten a phaser, nine left warp engine, three is a drone, which the Gorn doesn't have, so that's another phaser, and then a seven is another hull. So let me. Bring up the Gorn. So that's a forward hull. That's a right warp engine. That's a 10 for a phaser. Nine is left warp engine. That's another phaser. Oops, I'm doing them on the wrong ship, sorry. I should be doing that damage internal to the to the uh, the Fed. Uh, control Z, okay. So again, that was forward hull, right warp, phaser, left warp, three is a drone, the feds do have drones. Seven forward hull. It's the Gorn that gets a 25. This is a set of 10. That's a five for a right warp. Seven for a forward hull. Seven again for another forward hull. Eleven for a torpedo. Six for a forward hull. Five for an aft hull. Six 
seven for a forward hull. That was a five for an aft hull. An eleven for a phaser. Seven for a forward hull. If there are no forward hull, it goes to center hull. That's ten. Five aft hull. Nine. The left warp engine. Eight. Eight is an aft hull. Eight again is another aft hull. It's now all center hull hits. Ten is a phaser. Six is a forward hull, which is just simply center. Five is an aft hull for another center. Eleven is an impulse engine hit. Six is forward hull for another center. Another eleven is another impulse. And five more. One, two, three, four, five. 10 is a tractor. 6 forward hull. 6 again for another hull. 7 another hull. Hull is now gone. Another 11 for an impulse. Quite unusual to lose three fourths of your impulses and engines in one hit like that. Fed rolled a lot of 11s. And we go back to movement. Next impulse, nothing moves. The Fed has nothing that arcs. Gorn has nothing that arcs. Next impulse. The Gorn moves. Oh, I forgot the Speed 6 shuttles. They also move. Next impulse, the Fed moves. Fed is moving 13. Fed has got turn mode of 4. The Fed can barely make the turn down here and run this way. But if he does that, He's then exposing these shields, the weak ones, to this direction, from this side. If he turns this way, if he turns this way, he's exposing his number two shield, guaranteeing an internal shot for the Gorn. If he goes forward, If he goes forward with his turn mode of four, one, two, three, four, he's unable to turn this way. If he goes forward, one, two, three, four, he can turn this way if he wants. So going forward is probably the better choice. That locks him out of this. The Gorn is going to launch two more. Oh no, wait, the Gorn had two suicides. That's it. Okay. 
He has two weasels as well. I was thinking he had four for a moment there. Brain fart. Um, yeah, let's continue. Um, next impulse. Actually, hold. Uh, next impulse, the... Uh, Oh, yeah, that Speed 8 drones will move. Sorry for a moment there, I thought it was shuttles. Um, and the Gorn moves. Next impulse. The Fed moves. Next impulse, nothing. Next impulse, shuttles and Gorn. Next impulse, drones, and fed. Next impulse, nothing. Next impulse, Gorn. I just turned. And fed. Now the fed could go here. What weapons does he still have armed? He's got his rear half. Yeah, the two rear half ones are a good shot at range one. So that's what he'll do. So that's the uh, 11 and 12 phasers at the Gorn, which is BC4. This is 2 impulse 30, 3 and a 5, range 1. For 9 on the Gorn. Thirty-first impulse, nothing moves. Last impulse, everything moves. All right, didn't have the map to the front. Gorn went forward because of the side slip. Fed went forward because he didn't want to stay within uh, range one. And he just side slipped. One, two, three, yeah. And I think I moved the shuttle already. Yeah, it turned. Okay, so on this impulse, the Gorn is gonna fire. It has three phaser ones and a phaser three that can fire. This is at the Fed. Up a little bit. So it's at the Fed. It's 232. It is 3, 4, 9, and 7. So three phaser ones and a phaser three. Okay, so the phaser three at range two did a five, so that's two damage. And this is hitting the number three on the Fed. 
and then two, a four, and a five at range two. Two, and a four is ten, fourteen. So the Fed is pretty shieldless at this point. The Gorn is in a good position shielding wise. Except he's got a partially damaged shield facing the Fed. On his energy allocation stage again. Well at this point, the Gorn has taken internal damage. He's lost two warp, so he's only got 30 warp. He's lost three impulse, so he's only got one impulse. But he still has two APR, so that's 33 power available. He's got zero batteries in that are charged. Life support active fire control. Um, he's fired every single phaser, so out of the nine phasers, he's fired all nine. Um, he's lost one plasma torpedo tube, which is tube D. Now he does have so 33 power, life support active fire control, second turn of arming on the two S torps, second turn of arming on the F. This tube is destroyed. Shielding. The suicides are now gone. He does have two weasels. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven out of thirty-three. Twenty-two left. Gorn is going to pay a couple points in the tractor. He's got 20 left. He's going to charge all of his phasers. That uh, was going to be 9, but he's lost a few. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.5. Seven point five on the recharge phasers. Uh, for transporters, we'll throw in the other half point. Actually, we'll throw that into battery recharging. Recharging batteries. Point five. So we'll throw three point five into that. So where were we again? Eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Got nine left. Let's go speed four. And we get five reinforcement, which we are going to want to throw on the number five. Instead, let's put six of that power on the tractor and put one on the number five. So we powered up a tractor beam with six points. Now let's see what the Fed's going to do. Yeah, well, the Fed fired all of its photons. So it's going to be 16 points to start fully arming overloads. The Fed fired on turn two. So 
let me look at the Fed firing. It fired uh, one, two. Well, here, let's do this way. fired 9 and 10, it fired 5 and 6, it fired 1 through 4, 7 and 8, and 11 and 12. So the Fed fired every phaser it had. So it has 10.5 that it can charge up in phasers. And we'll throw in the 0.5 into the battery. So that'll count for 11. Now did the Fed lose power? Fed lost left and right warp engine, so he's down to 30 warp. The Fed did not lose any impulse or AWR. So he's down to, uh, oops, wrong line. That's the same. <laughs> 30 here on the third turn. So he's down to 36. And he's just used 11 of that. So he's at 25 left. My support, active fire control, and shields. That's another four off of that, so he's got 21 left. The four photons is 16, so he's got five left. With five power left, he's going to keep his two weasels, but he's going to drop his shuttles. That means he's got three left. Let's see. If he doesn't move and go speed zero, he can tack and put his number four towards him. So he can use an impulse tack and a warp tack and another tack. So that's three left. So that's what he'll do for movement. So that's three. And that's going to be warp warp and an impulse. We can also write that in special notes over here if we wanted to. So he fired every single one of his phasers, so there was zero armed at the beginning of this turn. That's the way I should have been using this line. I should have been doing 11, and then 9 fired, 2 left, so 2 there, plus the 9 here was 11, and we fired off all 11, 0 starting, whatever we fire this turn. Now we do have 5 batteries that are empty, except for the half point that we just put in. Um, now, do we want to fire or arm four overloads? No, we're short on power, so let's turn these into twos. That'll give us eight power. Well, we don't want to do that. We'll do two and two. So two of these are, are two pointers, and two of these are four pointers. That gives us four po power which we are going to throw into, that was the wrong line, that's over here. So we're going to put four 
12.5 into the battery. So we get 36 available. And 36 has been allocated. And we're going speed zero on the Fed. So the Fed is zero. We still got speed six shuttles. The Gorn. The Gorn is going speed four. And we still have speed eight drones on the board. Now the, the Gorn fired off his left side phasers, three, four, nine, and seven on the 32nd, so they're not able to fire until the 8th. And then he fired on the 20th, his one, two, five, six, ten, and eight, his right side ones. So with the uh, fed off the number five right now, the Gorn has one phaser one, which is armed and able to arc at the fed. Now, con continuous free damage repairs. The Gorn is going to fix an impulse engine. That'll get fixed at the end of this turn. And the Fed will start fixing an a, a left warp engine as an AWR. That will not be fixed at the end of this turn, but it'll be fixed at the end of next turn. He'll also fix a Phaser 3 as a Phaser 3. So that'll be two points to the warp, two points to the Phaser 3. Okay, so first impulse. Nothing moves. The Now the Gorn did put 3.5 in the battery. He's on the second turn of arming of one of his S-Torps, both of his S-Torps actually. He can drain two battery and launch that S-Torp as an F-Torp. It's called a fast loaded F-Torp or an acceler accelerated armed F-Torp. The Gorn is going to do that. So this is turn three, impulse one. It's launching a reel. Accelerated F warp. Target is the Fed ship, uh, CA3. Warhead strength is 20. Counter is counter 6. Launching unit is the Gorn, GRN. And the tube is A tube, if I am remembering my tubes correctly. Yep, A tube. So, that can be launched directly forward, this direction, or this direction. So that's the direction it's going to arm it in, or launch it in. So on the second impulse, nothing moves except for the plasma. Now the 
Fed's got a choice. The Fed has fired only two of his phasers in the last eight. The number 11 and 12, the rear half ones. That means he's got his uh, two phasers on this side, his four in the center, and two on the right available. These two and those four, they could fire into this F torp. But if he does that, they're not going to be available for the for the Gorn. Now, since he didn't fire them at the Gorn on the first impulse, because of the plasma launch, he was obviously holding them for the plasma. Now he's the Fed has got really weak shields. If he tacks now. He can put his number four towards the Gorn, and they'll be hitting his number four shield. And then he can tack back later to shoot the Gorn with phasers. Or, and if we look at his energy allocation form, he still has two wild weasels available. Since the speeds are low all the way around, That's what he's going to do. So the Fed is going to drop his active fire control and start raising it again after the weasel's destroyed. And he's going to launch a wild weasel. He's going to launch it in the direction off of his number four shield. The plasma is now targeting the Fed. The Fed has dropped his active fire control. These two drones drop off the board. So there's wild weasel speed six on the board. Next impulse. The plasma hits the wild weasel, destroys the weasel, but it's still in the same hex as the fed ship, and it takes collateral damage. There is a chart for collateral damage. Here it is, section J. So it's a 20 point warhead. So it's five points of damage. So five points to the Fed's rear shield. Does the Fed want to re use reinforcement on that? No. Okay, so the Fed is just taking damage from the explosion of the plasma wild weasel. It is now starting to bring its active fire control back up. It'll take four impulses for that to happen. So on the uh, <coughs> seventh impulse, he'll be able to fire phasers again. Okay, so next impulse. It's 
Speed 8 drones would have moved, but they're no longer on the board. Fifth impulse, nothing moves. Sixth impulse, the two suicide shuttles move. Seventh impulse, nothing moves. Fed's phasers are up. On this impulse, the Fed has all of its phasers available to fire, and that's what they're going to do. At least those that arc. So, at the Gorn, on turn 3, the Fed is going to fire phaser 7 8. Eleven and twelve. And his phaser three number nine. Phaser three, range two. That's four damage. Now I'm, I'm holding back the uh, batteries. There is reinforcement of one there, so I'll take off that one last hit for that. And there are four phaser one, four phaser ones firing as well. So here are the four phaser ones. Two, three, three, six at range two. Two, three, three is sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So the Gorn's going to be taking seven inside unless he has any more reinforcement. Now he did have 3.5 battery, he's used two, it means there's one there, so he's going to use one more battery to reinforce. So that's going to be six inside. Five is a right warp engine. Now, the decision to kill an F warp or to kill an S warp. Well, we'll fire. We'll kill the S warp that was just launched. Ten is a phaser. Bill number seven. Seven is cargo forward hull battery. Well, it's an empty battery now, so I kill the battery. Nine. Left warp engine. And five. Atoll cargo battery. Next impulse, the speed four Gorn moves. Turn mode for the Gorn. And speed four is a turn mode of one. Now on this impulse, 
of the Fed will perform a warp attack. Now this does bring a down number six shield towards the Gorn if he does this. But it also brings to bear four phaser ones that can shoot through the Gorn's down number five shield. Whereas the Gorn has two phaser ones. Sorry, four phaser ones, which can fire back. So the Fed, the Fed wouldn't want to do that. Actually, the Fed doesn't have to attack at all. He's got four and half phasers. So these four can arc because it's front half and it's a shield line. So the next moving target, or sorry, the next ship to move determines the shield facing. And since the uh, Fed is zero and the Gorn is moving, it's going to be shooting the number five. So the Fed's going to fire four phaser ones. That's phasers one through four at the Gorn. Three eight. One, two, three, and a five. One and two is thirteen. A three is 18. That's 22 more internal to the Gorn. Seven is a battery. The Gorn would be returning fire, of course, because similarly, the Gorn is firing on the Fed's down number two, and the Gorn would be returning fire with uh, one, two, three four phaser ones. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, but as I was saying, a phaser hit for the Gorn. Seven. A butt battery hit. Six. Is an impulse hit. Four. Is a phaser hit. Seven. It's a lab hit. Six. It's a lab hit. Seven. It's cargo forward battery center wire pins and is a shuttle hit. Seven is another shuttle hit. And I just realized the Gorn's got six shuttles, not four like I was thinking he did. Six is a lab hit. Eight and seven. Seven is a lab hit. Eight is aft hull APR. Last set of ten.
seven is a shuttle hit. That'll be one of the weasels. Five is a right warp engine hit. Ten is a phaser hit. Ten again is a tractor hit. Six forward hull impulse uh, lab con left warp engine hit. Six is left warp engine hit. Three is a phaser hit. Seven is a shuttle hit. That'll be the other weasel. Five is an aft hull cargo battery shuttle hit. It's one of the admins. Three is a uh, left warp engine hit. Okay, and the four phaser ones that are coming back at the Fed from the number one, nine, three and four. One, one, two, and a four. So that's 14. Plus a six is 20. 24. Through the Fed's number two shield. Because the Fed didn't attack, it chose to fire. All is ox con. Nine is left warp. Eleven is a torpedo. It's going to kill one of the uh, point or one of the two two pointers, not one of the four pointers. Eleven is a phaser. Five is a right warp engine. Four is a phaser. These have to be one of the ones up here. Three is a drone. Six is a forward hull. That was the first ten. Let's do the last four, and then ten after that. One, two, uh, three, four. Ten is another phaser. Nine is a forward hull. Three is another phaser. Seven is for cargo forward hull. And then the ten.
that was an 11 for a tractor. Nine Ford Hall. Eleven for an impulse. Two for a bridge. Eight for an aft hull. Twelve for an emergency bridge. Ten for a left warp engine. And three for a transporter. Next impulse, nothing moves. Impulse after that, nothing moves. Impulse after that, speed six shuttles move. Impulse after that, nothing. Impulse after that, nothing. Impulse after that, nothing. Fifteenth impulse. Nothing. 16th impulse. Speed 4 Gorn. We'll turn in towards the Fed. And speed 6 shuttles. The Gorn, realizing that it had another shuttle, um, No, it's the last one was Weasel. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I kept the, the Weasel and killed the admins. Okay. Let's see. This is the number two on the Fed. Does the Fed wish to tack? Yes. The Fed will tack. That will be another warp. That means there's an impulse left. Um, the Fed only has two Phaser 1s the for the fire forward and two Phaser 1s that fire to the rear. Base hitting a perfectly good up shield on the Gorn. Uh, should hold that. The Fed knows the Gorn's got one more shuttle. He wouldn't know if it's a suicide or an admin. So he would hold the fire there. There are two shuttles behind the Fed. So the Fed would either fire one phaser one at each and hope for a kill when it would or at range one that's only on a range, roll of one or two or fire two phaser ones as a phaser three at range one, which would be a guaranteed kill. Or fire one phaser one, roll for the damage, and then possibly fire the other one as a phaser three, which is probably what he would do. The Gorn at this point has one phaser one firing directly off of the, the number one shield of the Fed, and that's what the Gorn will fire. So the Gorn will fire phaser number two at the Fed on 316, and the Fed will fire phaser number eight as a phaser one at the Gorn shuttle, 316. So here's the shuttle shot, phaser one. That's a four. Range one is four damage. So it's a speed three shuttle. <coughs> and the uh, one phaser one at the Fed is a six. 
the range one is four. Takes out the two shields, does two internals. Five, right warp engine. Ten, a phaser. Next impulse, the Fed will fire his remaining phaser, number seven, at the Gorn shuttle, the damaged one. That's an automatic kill. He'll fire it as a phaser three. Means there's a half point left for the phaser capacitor on the Fed. Next impulse, nothing moves. Next impulse, nothing moves. Next impulse, nothing moves. Next impulse, the 21st, nothing moves. Impulse after that, which is the 22nd, the Speed 6 shuttle will move. The Fed had nothing left to fire at it. It's a suicide shuttle. It hits for 18. Twenty-third impulse, nothing moves. Twenty-fourth impulse, the speed four Gorn moves. The Gorn turns. It's the number one Gorn shield. Facing the number one Fed shield. The Fed has the ability to do one more attack. So instead of taking damage through the number one, it will tack the last movement it can do to bring the number six shield to bear. Next impulse, nothing. Impulse after that, nothing. Impulse 27. Speed sixes move. Sixes are no longer on the board. On the last impulse, the Gorn moves. Let's see what shields are like on the Fed. Well. Corner is going to side slip off the Fed's number six, which is down. Now the Gorn has phasers five and six, which are armed and have not fired. So two phaser ones, range one, at the Fed through a down shield. And a three. Two and a three, range one. Twelve. So twelve internal. So here's two out of the ten. Seven and eight. Seven is a forward hull. Eight is an aft hull. Four is a phaser, must be able to shoot at the six. Sorry, the number two shield. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. Six is a forward hull. Five, right warp engine. Eight 
8 forward hull, 11 photon torpedo, the other two pointer, Eleven is a phaser. Nine left warp engine. Nine forward hull. Ten phaser. None can get hit. Tractor beam instead. Six. Ford Hall. Okay, the Gorn. Sorry, the Fed was able to fix a phaser three. was able to fix an impulse engine. So he's got 24 warp. He now has one impulse and one APR for 26 power total. He has lost the A tube and he has lost the D tube. The corn is arming and enveloping plasma torpedo. Life support, active fire control, shields, one wild weasel that's left, and he's got half a point still left in battery, or did he lose all his batteries? He lost all his batteries. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I've got ten power left. Gonna go speed four. Six power left. How many battery? How many phasers do I got? One, two, three. Arm all three. And throw three into negative tractor. Or three into tractor, period. It can be used as either positive or negative. The energy allocation for the Fed. Let's see what he's got. Two warp left. It's good. Sorry, he's got twenty four warp left. He's got uh, three impulse. And two ABR. He's got twenty nine power. Okay. 
He's got half a point left in his phaser capacitor. Every other phaser. Except for five and six. If I verify that. Yeah, every phaser except five and six is fired. So he's got 2.5 left in the capacitor. And he put 10.5 in there. So all the phasers that he has are armed, except for 7 and 8. So let's put two points into that. My sport active fire control, shields. Does he want to pay for shields? Well, if he doesn't pay for shields, he's got none. He does still have some shielding. Uh, those two torpedo tubes are destroyed. He's used one wild weasel. Does he have enough power to keep the other one armed? Let's take a look and see. He fully arms these. It's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen out of twenty nine. The Gorn is off of his down shield, number six, or sorry, number two. And has at least one phaser one that he can probably fire. Let's take a look. Number two is fired on the 16th, yeah. So, in order to stop taking internals for a down shield, the Fed's going to want to put a lot into general reinforcement to cover a down shield. He'll put four into movement or attacking. Uh, da -da, let's see. He'll do three again. Same thing. He's got 11 left. So that's 10 into general for five reinforcement. So that's three warp, one impulse. So that's three and one. Okay, so let's see how this plays out. The Fed's got photons which arm on the Gorn. So the Gorn. Got a 24 shield facing him, but he's also got a weasel, and the Gorn is going speed four. So on movement tractor tractor stage, the Fed doesn't want the Gorn to weasel, so he'll try and tractor. Does he have tractor power allocated? No completely forgot about it. So the Gorn launches a wild weasel. 
Gorn is going to face this off of. His number six shield. <coughs> Traveling speed six. The fastest thing on the mo on the map. But that's on launch of shuttle stage. There is actually a launch of plasma and drones before shuttles. So let's see. The Gorn. Paid for tractor. It has no tractor beams, but negative tractor doesn't require a tractor beam. Oh, by the way, Gorn's going to be continuous damage repairing another impulse this turn. Uh, the Fed is going to finish doing that warp engine as AWR. Uh, so let's see. So the Gorn can't tractor the Fed. So the Gorn's simply going to weasel. Now the Fed, for weapons, has two phaser ones which don't arc. He's got two phaser ones rear half which don't arc. But he does have two photons to, fe to fire. But he doesn't want to fire two photons into a wild weasel shift. He's got rolls of one to six, but with the wild weasel shift it's one to four. So no no actions from the Fed on the first impulse. Second impulse, the Fed is going to tack. He wants to bring his five and six phaser ones and his seven eight to bear. And he wants a good shield to be facing him, so he's gonna impulse sorry, warp tack. Next impulse he will then impulse tack. He's got a one point up shield facing the Gorn, who's under a weasel, but now he's got his five and six phasers, which can fire at the number five, closer being able to fire, and his seven and eight phasers can fire. So that's a speed six shuttle. He's going to fire one phaser one at the shuttle and see how much damage it does. This will be turn four. Impulse two. And this will be number eight at the shut, shuttle. Weasel. Now you don't see that. That's a five roll. And a five roll is four damage even for a phaser one. So it's now a speed three shuttle. Next impulse, nothing moves. The fed will fire again. The other phaser one, or sorry, the repaired phaser three as a phaser three, and it will automatically kill the shuttle. The Gorn starts to raise his active fire control. It'll be up on the seventh. However, now that his weasel has been voided and destroyed, there's nothing stopping the Gorn from firing. The Gorn, since he's got no active fire control, doubles the range, but range one doubled his range two, it's not that bad. But he does have three phaser ones, which are currently facing at a number four shield of a fed. Because next impulse the fed's gonna attack. Or try to. Actually, he has to wait until the 
eighth impulse before you can attack again. So, with three phaser ones, and he's covered by the wild weasel explosion, he's going to take the fed by surprise and fire those three phaser ones, that's two, five, and six, at the fed on impulse three. at range two with very good rolls. Now it is rather unfortunate the Fed fired so quickly to destroy the weasel. He actually should have waited until about the seventh impulse or the eighth impulse even to fire. That was a tactical mistake. So at range two, that's seven, and a six for 13, and a four is 15. So that's 14 inside on the fed. Here's the roll of the four. Okay, it's a six. That's a forward halt. Five, that's a right warp engine. It's a seven, that's a forward hull. The Fed has none. Uh, it's an impulse hit. And then a seven, cargo forward battery. And then the ten. Four is a phaser. Kill the phaser three that's already fired. Seven is a battery. Nine is a left warp. Ten is a phaser. Three has a phaser. Ten is a tractor. Tractors are gone. Left warp engine. Six impulse. Three impulse. Five, aft hull. Eight, aft hull. So no shuttle hits and no torpedo hits. Boo hoo for the Gorn. Okay, so the next impulse, nothing, impulse after that, nothing, impulse after that, nothing, eighth impulse. The Gorn moves. His active fire control. Sorry. Um, seventh impulse is active fire control is up. That's when the Fed would fire his uh, two photons but they're not facing. Eighth impulse. The Fed tax. And the Gorn moves. And 
And believe it or not, I completely forgot about the the photons being FA, and I completely forgot about the facing and the arcing of them for the tacking. Anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, Gorn, will, Gorn will slip. For the next seven impulses, nothing happens. And then the, the Fed will attack. The Gorn will move. On this impulse, the Fed will fire his two overloaded photons and his two phaser ones. The whites are the phaser ones. That's a range of three shot for the Fed, unfortunately. Phaser ones are white. That was a three. So both photons hit, and the phasers hit. That range of three. Got one to four rolls. So that's 32. And nine is 41. 41 on the Fed. Sorry, 41 inside on the Gorn. Sorry, 41 on the shield of the, the Gorn is uh, it's going to be 17 inside for the Gorn. Does the Gorn have any reinforcement on his number three? No. Does the Gorn have batteries? Batteries are blown off. So, 17 inside on the Gorn. Yeah, this is going to hurt. Okay, here's the seven. Four is a phaser. Three is a phaser. Two is a bridge. Six is an impulse. Three is a phaser, shooting through the number three, yep. Six is an impulse, there are none. A lab, there are none. Left warp engine. Nine, left warp engine. And then the full ten. Three is an impulse, can't get hit, left warp. Nine is a left warp. Seven is a empty shuttle bay. Eight is a right warp engine. Right warp engine. Shuttle APR, right warp engine, uh, 
right warp engine. Left warp engine. Transporter. That's all the movements that the Fed can do. The Fed has fired off all of its weapons. The Gorn has armed an S Torp and an S Torp. shield facing the Gorn this is a number one and the number six okay on the 17th through 23rd nothing happens the Fed is out of tax The Gorn will move once on the 24th. And then once on the 32nd, which only gives him two moves. So he cannot maneuver both the F Torp and the S Torp at the Fed. So his best maneuver is to fire his enveloped S Torp now. And the Fed will retaliate with a Wild Weasel. And the Fed will put this off of his number 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It'll hit before the shuttle has a chance to move. Which will do collateral damage to the number 5. Thirty point warhead will do six damage. And then the Gorn waits for the uh, weasel to go away. and turns. The weasel's gone. This is the 24th impulse. And it will launch an F-Torp. It's going to be real. It's launching on the 24th. So 424 F at the Fed. Real. The first movement on the 25th. It must move forward. Seeking weapons cannot be forced to HET. Next impulse, it turns. 27th impulse, it turns. 28th impulse, it moves. 29th impulse, it moves. 30th impulse, it hits. So it's a 15 point warhead. Hitting the number 5 shield. So that's 10 inside on the Fed. Gorn would have preferred to have launched the F-Torp to pull out the weasel, and then launched the big S-Torp, but it just didn't work out that way. Oh, wait a minute, that wasn't a 30. Um, that was uh, a 60-point warhead. It was an enveloper. So that wouldn't have done 6 damage to that shield. That would have actually done... Oh. 
Oops. Sixty would have done eight. So it's three more damage. So it's thirteen inside. So let's roll the three first. Here's the three. Five, eleven, ten. Five is a right warp engine. Eleven is a photon. Ten is a phaser. And then the set of ten. Seven is cargo, forward hull, battery. Nine is left warp engine. Five is right warp engine. Eight is aft hull APR. Seven is forward hull battery. Nine is cargo forward hull battery. Battery's now gone. Whoops, let's see. Five. Aft hull cargo battery shuttle. Six forward hull impulse lab. Three is a phaser. Nine lab. And then on the last impulse, the Gorn moves. Gorn has no phasers. But he does have a rear shield. The Fed. Oh, sorry, the Gorn will be fixing that warp engine. Or, sorry, that impulse engine. The Fed fixes the warp engine as an AWR, so I'm just going to fix the AWR box. That was actually the warp engine it was fixing as AWR. And what does the Fed have for weapons? The Federation has no phasers, but he has one photon. The Gorn has no phasers, but he has two plasmas. So at this point, The Fed and the Gorn can both try doing emergency damage repairs with labs for power. At least the Fed can. Um, but in two turns, the, the Gorn is going to have an F, a fast loaded S as an F, and then the turn after that, another F. Whereas the Fed has got one photon. The Fed has got no shields. The, the Gorn has still got three good fighting shields. The Fed really only has one shield. So I think the Gorn is going to take this. It'll take about another two or three, four turns of not much happening, just flying around and uh, fixing shields. But let's see, we got three, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 
17, 18 power. 20 power, I think, on the Fed. And 16 power on the Gorn. The Gorn's going to be opening up space. And I don't think either ship has to pay for life support anymore. But I would say this one's going to go to the Gorn by a hair, by a nose. So that was a quick demonstration game of me playing against myself. And I hope it was in, informative for you as a quick how to play Starfleet Battles. We didn't really get into how to do emergency damage repair or continuous damage repair. That's stuff we can get into later. I did briefly do a couple repairs, uh, Phaser 3, you know, an AWR, and a couple of impulse engines. Uh, there's actually a chart that lists all the systems and the, the points that they cost, and each ship has a damage control rating of four, so they have four points of continuous repair that they use for free for fixing things in, inside, but they can only fix four things total by doing that. So the Fed has used one for an AWR and one for a Phaser 3, and the Gorn has used two for impulse engines. Um, that means there's two fixes left that the Gorn can do. He would probably fix Phaser 1s as Phaser 1s, Whereas the Fed would probably start fixing Yeah, probably two phaser ones as phaser ones, or possibly phaser ones as phaser twos. So those will both come back online for both of them pretty much at the same time, but again the Gorn's got better shields. The Fed will probably shoot at, at, at up shields where the Gorn's probably going to be getting a down shield when he shoots. Plus he's got the plasmas that will eventually come online where the Fed has got to get within range 8 for that photon shot and the Gorn doesn't have to get close anymore. Of course, if I was uh, paying a little bit more attention, the Gorn would have uh, launched two of those gas shuttles as administrative shuttles. They each have a Phaser 3 360, as all shuttles do. But the the Gorn gas shuttles take six, or sorry, eight to kill instead of six. And uh, in that corner fight there, two Phaser 3s flying around when the Fed was short on Phasers could have made a bit of a difference for scoring a few internals more here and there. Uh, I did mess up on the tacking on the Fed a little bit, but I compensated it for it. Uh, it would have really hurt if one of those two photons had missed, uh, but they both hit and the fit the phasers rolled fairly well, so the the longer range didn't really hurt too much. I might have lost a point or two of damage from the phasers, so even though I screwed up not too badly. Although I did miss this, this little note about it being able to fire those phasers directly backwards. I can't remember if that would have made a difference anywhere. No, I think I would have let the shuttle hit the shield and kept them for firing at the ship as we did. So yeah, that's the end of it. That's the uh, Fed versus Gorn. How to learn how to play SFB. Hope you enjoyed it.